Counterpoint, the General Knowledge Music Quiz, chaired by Paul Gambaccini. Hello. Whether it's Glyndebourne or Glastonbury that gets you excited, our College of Musical Knowledge aims to provide education and entertainment to suit every taste. With me here at the UTC at Media City in Salford is another trio of amateur music experts hoping to win a place in the semifinals of Counterpoint 2019. Let's ask them to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Mike Clark. I'm a volunteer worker from Montrose and Angus. Hi, I'm Andrew Fisher. I'm a software process manager from Sheffield. Hello, I'm Nick Reid. I'm a local council clerk from Massam in North Yorkshire. Gentlemen, the ladies have deserted you for today's contest, which prompts me to mention to female listeners that we always encourage applications from women and would love to see more of you giving the men a run for their money in the quiz. There are two points available for each of your own questions in this opening round, and one bonus point for picking up someone else's if they can't answer or get it wrong. Good luck, all three of you. Would you start us off today, please? Mike Clark, sometimes referred to as drama per music, what two-word term is often applied to the kind of opera of which Mozart's Idomeneo and La Clemenza di Tito are specific examples? Opera seria? That's right. Referring to the noble or serious style of 18th century opera that favored classical rather than frivolous themes. Andrew Fisher. Very far removed from that genre is this theme music from the 2019 BBC period drama Gentleman Jack. Your question will follow. Behind the back, she's Gentleman Jack, the Yorkshire lady of renown. Never so fine, will toe the line, speak her name, Gentleman Frown. With shipped and all, she had them all. The fairer sex fell under a spell. Dapper and bright, she held them tight. Handsome man seduced them well. Gentleman Jack, oh Gentleman Jack, watch your back, you're under attack. Her husbands are coming, you better start running for nobody likes a Jack the Lass. Jack the Lass, Jack the Lass, no one likes a Jack the Lass. Cracked your bags and pack the knives around for Gentleman Jack. You heard the folk duo Ohuli and Tiddo. They have their origins in a West Yorkshire town whose musical connections include being the birthplace of violinist Billy Curry, the home of beatboxer Testament, and for a short while, the home of Wallace Arnold, the ill-fated bandleader on the Titanic. Which Yorkshire town is that? Halifax. No, I'm sorry. Uh, does anyone else know Nick Reed? Evan Bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong, too. Mike Clark, would you like to name a Yorkshire town? Wheelie Bridge. Oh, nice guess, but it's Huddersfield. Oh. Also the birthplace of the writer of Gentleman Jack, Sally Wainwright. Nick Reed, How Music Works, published in 2012, is a book of essays covering subjects as diverse as Algerian pop, the musicality of animals, and the ethics of philanthropy. Which prominent rock musician is the author of How Music Works? David Byrne. That's right. Mike Clark, David Byrne was born in Scotland, as was the composer whose work we're about to hear, who celebrated his 60th birthday in 2019. This is part of a major choral work dating from 1993. Who was the composer? Go to see Jack Jack Heggie. I'm sorry, it isn't. Oh. Andrew Fisher says Arvo Park. Oh no, he's not from Scotland. <laughs> and Nick Reed, would you like to name a Scottish composer? I'll know when you tell me. <laughs> I will tell you, Sir James Macmillan. We heard verily, verily from Seven Last Words from the Cross. Andrew Fisher. 
Can you name the red, plush, and gold Victorian theater in Leeds, which has played host to Houdini, Buster Keaton, Mickey Rooney, and for many decades, television's The Good Old Days? Nope. Nick says? Leeds City Varieties. And he's right, for a bonus point. Nick, here's your own question. Here's the voice of a much-missed singer who died earlier this year. Can you name him? You lose your way A boy child rides upon your back Take him away Through mirrors dark And blessed with cracks through forgotten courtyards where you used to search for you. Old gets a new life. Reach out, you can touch it. James Ward. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't. And Mike Clark says... Scott Walker. It was Scott Walker. We heard Boy Child from Scott 4. And Mike, here's your own question. Which long-running Radio 4 program makes use of the Leroy Anderson piece, The Typewriter? The News Quiz. That's right. Andrew Fisher, more music for you. Something from the 1995 album release, Hi Ho, which featured popular Disney tunes in the style of great classical composers. For two points, can you tell me which Russian composer's influence is borrowed here and the title of the song that is being reimagined? Circle of Life, um, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky is correct for one point. Can anyone guess what the song was? Can You Feel the Love oh, Tonight? Yeah. What's that doing? Nick Reed, as the final session of the European Parliament wrapped up in April 2019, the Slovenian MEP Loisa Petrle took the opportunity of giving a rendition of the EU anthem, Beethoven's Ode to Joy, that drew applause from fellow politicians. On what instrument did he give that impromptu performance? Harmonica? Yes. <laughs> he performed the Ode to Joy on harmonica, and told MEPs, it is our responsibility to keep Europe together. Let's rebuild Notre Dame. And happy Easter. <laughs> Mike Clark, back to you. And your next clip of music from a symphony of the 1880s by another European composer. I'd like you to tell me the composer's name. Meyerbeer? No, uh, Nick Reed says. Vorschach. And he's right for a bonus point. Andrew Fisher, a special late-night prom concert in July 2019, celebrated the 50th anniversary of the moon landing with the performance of a new arrangement of a long piece called The Race for Space by a British experimental band formed by the self-styled J. Wildgoose Esquire. The prom was aired on BBC Six Music, as well as broadcast on BBC Four television. What's the name of the band? It wasn't public service broadcasting, was it? It was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like the two points? 
Please. <laughs> okay. You've got two points. Nick Reed, for your final clip in this round, you get an excerpt from Lin-Manuel Miranda's multi-award-winning musical, Hamilton. I'd simply like you to tell me which character is performing this song. You say the price of my love is not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry in your tea, which you hurl in the sea when you see me go by. Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when you went away Now you're making me mad Remember despite our estrangement I'm your man You'll be back Soon you'll see you remember you belong to me You'll be back King George III. That's right, King George III singing You'll Be Back. And so, at the end of the opening round, the scores are... In third place, with three points, Andrew Fisher. Lying second with five points, Mike Clark. And in the lead with eight points, Nick Reed. Our contestants now face their individual questions on special musical topics of their own choosing. But the twist on Counterpoint is that they don't get to hear the categories until this moment. They've had no chance to prepare. The rankings so far determine the order in which they'll pick. So, gentlemen, are you ready for today's categories to be revealed? They are Glenn Miller and Benny Goodman, Classical Carnivals, Queen at the Movies, Pop Gear, Driving tunes. And get ready for the weekend. You're in the lead, Nick Reed. So you get the first choice. I'll try pop gear, please. And for you, Mike Clark? I'll try get ready for the weekend. Now that leaves three Mm. for Andrew Fisher. Glenn Miller and Benny Goodman. Classical carnivals and Queen at the movies. I think it has to be classical carnivals. The contestant lying third goes first. So, Andrew Fisher, here come your questions on classical carnivals. Carnival, a major piano work from 1835, contains musical portraits of Chopin and Paganini, as well as movements dedicated to Harlequin, Columbine, Pierrot, and two of the composer's fiancés. Who wrote Carnival? Schumann. Yes, that's right, for two points. Which composer wrote this description of a carnival in Pest, the ninth of his Hungarian rhapsodies? List. That's right, Franz Liszt. Which of Liszt's contemporaries wrote the concert overture Carnival, the second overture in his Nature, Life, and Love trilogy, which also includes Othello and In Nature's Realm? Berlioz? No, it was Dvorak. Here's a Carnival piece by Benjamin Britten. According to its title, which Commonwealth country is the location of this Carnival? Australia? I'm sorry, it's Canada, Britain's Canadian (laughs) carnival. Which Czech composer's works include the orchestral tone poem Prague Carnival, although he's best known for a cycle of tone poems with the overall title My Country? 
Schmetana? That is right, for two points. Your next extract is from an orchestral fantasy by Darius Mio, based on 18th century musical themes. According to its title, in which capital city is this carnival taking place? I guess Paris. No, he's actually writing about London, using themes from the Beggar's Opera. Finally, in which famous musical carnival will you find tortoises? Carnival of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were competing against yourself there. I didn't even have to mention personages with long ears. And so, in that round, Andrew Fisher, you scored eight points added to your previous three. You now have 11 points. <laughs> Mike Clark... Get ready for the weekend. Here are your questions. In 1979, Blondie had a number one hit with Sunday Girl, which featured on their best-selling album alongside three other major hits, Hanging on the Telephone, Heart of Glass, and Picture This. Can you tell me the title of the album? Parallel Lines? That's right, for two points. Aaron Copland's ballet Rodeo was first performed in New York in 1942. This is one of the dances from the orchestral suite, with a title relevant to this round. Can you tell me what it's called? I thought it was entirely relevant, but I'm going for Hair Ride. <laughs> no, it's Saturday Night Waltz. Oh, okay. Which song, first released in 1946, that over the years has been recorded by artists including Ella Fitzgerald, Etta James, and The Four Seasons, contains these lyrics? And my arms need someone, someone to enfold, to keep me warm when Mondays and Tuesdays grow cold. <sighs> No, sorry, can't think of that one. A Sunday Kind of Love. Oh. Your next question features an extract from a song called Saturday Comes Slow by the Bristol-based musical collective Massive Attack. Have a listen, and then afterwards, see if you can tell me the name of the guest vocalist. Go see Tom York, but I don't think it is. Tom York? No, Tom York is actually a pretty good guess because it's actually Damon Albarn, the lead singer oh, of Blur. Nice, yeah. In our round of Get Ready for the Weekend, we now come to Cap Teeth and Caesar Salad. It's not the end of the world if he's married. And take that look off your face. They're songs from which musical show first performed in 1979? Never on a Sunday. No, oh. it's... Ah, no. Oh, dear me. One point for the Sunday. Oh, yeah. But it's Tell Me on a Sunday. Oh, tell me on a Sunday. Of course. Yeah. Never on Sunday was the Melina Mercury yeah, film. Yeah. Okay. The American R&B singer Sherelle had a substantial hit in 1985 with the song Saturday Love, featuring guest vocals by this performer. Who is this? When I think about...
Alexander O'Neill. That's right for two points, Alexander O'Neill. Finally, what is the professional name of the Scottish DJ Adam Richard Wiles, whose string of chart hits includes the 2009 single that gives its name to this round, Get Ready for the Weekend? What's his name? Um, God. Oh, Calvin Harris. That's right. Oh, my God. (laughs) Calvin Harris, who, according to Forbes magazine, is officially the richest DJ of all time with earnings of over $175 million. Somewhere I took a wrong turn. (laughs) And, Mike Clark, in that round, you got seven points added to your previous five. You now have 12 points. Nick Reed, you've chosen to go with Pop Gear, Driving Tunes. Which number one single by Gary Newman shares its name with an animated adventure film produced by Pixar Studios? Cars. Yes. A few weeks ago, we heard of the sad death of Rick Okasik, singer and songwriter with the Cars. They provide your first music clip in this round. A question will follow. Who's going to tell you when? It's too. Who's gonna tell you things Aren't so great You can't go on Thinking Nothing's wrong Drive was initially a top five hit in 1984. In the summer of the following year, it re-entered the British charts, climbing even higher than it had the first time around after it was used in a video montage presented at which major event? Live Aid. That is correct. Video clips depicted the Ethiopian famine. Which Joni Mitchell song features the refrain, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot? Big Yellow Taxi. Correct, for two points. More music. It's time to jump on the back of Prince's Hondomatic Motorcycle. The song Take Me With You is from the soundtrack to Prince's movie Purple Rain. The motorcycle featured prominently on movie posters and album covers. When you've heard the extract, can you name the other singer and actress who was in the passenger seat for Take Me With You? Was it Lisa Bonet? It wasn't. It was Apollonia. Which song from Fleetwood Mac's Rumors album has become heavily associated with Formula One motor racing? The Chain. That's right, because of its use in TV coverage. Fasten your seatbelt. We're about to listen to Grace Jones. In the video to Slave to the Rhythm from 1985, Grace Jones is seen driving a vehicle which has been fired out of a giant replica of her head. The footage was also used in a car advert. When the commercial was released, Grace Jones was hot property, having recently starred in which Bond film? Um, The Living Daylights? I'm sorry. It was A View to a Kill, in which she played the villainous May Day. Finally, before we put the brakes on this round, I'd like you to tell me which British band were driving away from home in spring 1986. It's immaterial. That's right. It is material because you get two points. And so, Nick Reed, in that round, you scored 10 points. Added to your previous eight, you now have 18 points. Let's recap the scores after the individual round. In third place with 11 points is Andrew Fisher. Lying second with 12 points is Mike Clark. And our leader with just one round to go with 18 points is Nick Reed.
It's on the button in the quick fire final round, and things can change quickly. A correct answer wins you one point, but you lose a point if you flash in and fail to answer correctly. There are no bonuses. Fingers poised, here we go. Which band of Mancunian origin featured Mike Joyce, Andy Rourke, and Nick Reed says? The Smiths. For the point. Which star of country music who sang about your cheating heart died on New Year's Day, 1953? Mike Clark. Hark Williams. For the point. Which song originally by the Zootons did Mark Ronson and Andy Valerie. Fisher... Valerie. Yes, oh. indeed. Which Scottish singer-songwriter reached number one in 2019 with Someone You Loved? And Nick Reed says... Lewis Capaldi. For the point. Act four of Puccini's opera Manon Lesko is set on a deserted plain outside which American city? And Mike Clark says... Salt Lake City. No, I'm sorry, it's New Orleans, minus one. Hugh Jackman made his name in the National Theater's 1998 production of which Rodgers and Hammerstein musical? Mike Clark. Oklahoma. That's right, he played the role of Curly. Who wrote most of the music for the David Lean films, The Sound Barrier and Bridge on the River Kwai? Mike Clark. Maurice Shaw. No, I'm sorry. It was Malcolm Arnold. Arnold. Yeah. Which group formed in Sheffield took their name from a fictional pop group mentioned in Anthony Burgess's and Mike Clark says... Heaven 17. That's right. Which ballet score by Copeland features quotations from the cowboy songs The Old Chisholm Trail and Andrew Fisher says... Billy the Kid. And he's right. Brian, Lamont, and Eddie are the first names of which celebrated songwriting trio, Nick Reed? Holland, Dozier, Holland. Yes. Which Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera is set in a place called Titipu? Mike Clark. Mikado. Yes. Life in a Day. Sons in Fascination, and Once Upon a Time, Nick Reed? Simple Wines. Yes. In an opera by Bizet, Frasquita and Mercedes are companions of which title oh. character, Mike Clark? Oh, sorry, no. no. Oh, my gosh. Minus yeah. one. Andrew Fisher would have known it. The answer is Carmen. <laughs> Which work was Andre yeah. Previn conducting at the 1974 proms when the baritone Thomas Allen fainted near the end of a solo? Thomas Allen fainted during... Carmina Barana. Which band leader used One O'Clock Jump as his signature tune? Mike Clark. Count Basie? Yes. With which rock band formed in 1985 is the guitarist known as Slash, associated Nick Reed? Uh, Guns N' Roses. Yes. In which northern English city was Frederick Delius born? Mike Clark. Bradford. Yes. And finally, complete the newspaper headline concerning the 2019 Sunday Times Rich List. Queen are wealthier than... Mike Clark? The Queen. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Bringing us to the end of today's heat with the final scores as follows. Third with 13 points, Andrew Fisher. Runner-up with 16 points, Mike Clark. And our winner with 23 points, Nick Reed. Many congratulations, Nick Reed. We'll be seeing you again in a few short weeks for the Counterpoint semifinals. And thank you to the other two for such an entertaining competition. You can always come back in a future series for another go with the title. Counterpoint at bbc.co.uk is the email address if you'd like to request an application form to take part next year. Counterpoint at bbc.co.uk. And if you download Counterpoint from BBC Sounds, you'll get to hear a slightly extended edition of the quiz each week. Week. We'll be making another trip to Salford in a fortnight, but join us in London next time where three more music lovers will be playing Counterpoint. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>